The spring semester is in full swing and Northwestern is buzzing with lots of activities. We have the latest on what's going on at your campus. Keep it here, Ranger News starts now. <laughs> Live on the campus of Northwestern Oklahoma State University, this is Ranger 7. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Caitlin Ball. And I'm Bruce Wright. Calling all music lovers and singers, the newest edition of Northwestern's The Voice is debuting on Thursday, March 5th. This year's production will be held on the Alva campus in Herod Hall Auditorium. If you would like to be a part of this grand show, rehearsals will be Wednesday, March 4th at 5.30 p.m. If you would like to attend, doors open at 6 p.m. and will start at 6.30. Come support your fellow Rangers and their talents at this year's The Voice. Premier Oklahoma-based modern and aerial dance company Perpetual Motion will be visiting Northwestern for the final show of the Northwestern Oklahoma Concert Series. Perpetual Motion is known for their exciting and innovative choreography with a reputation for thrilling the audience with graceful aerial maneuvers. They are the first dance company in Oklahoma to perform aerial dance routines and they perform at dance festivals across the United States. The show will be in the Herod Hall Auditorium March 10th at 7.30 p.m. Tickets can be purchased at Holder Drugstore, Rialto Theater, the NWOSU Bookstore, or the Graceful Arts Center. For more information on the concert series, contact Dr. Irene Mesaloris at 580-327-8692. The English department here at Northwestern is sponsoring a creative reading night in four months in a four-month series with run, one reading a month. This event will be at the Graceful Arts Gallery and Studio located at 523 Barnes. This event is free and open to the public. Each night will consist of a different theme. There will be a reading on March 6 consisting of Northwestern students' works called Ranger Readings. Upcoming themes include April 3rd, Poetry Night, in honor of National Poetry Month, and May 15th will be a theme to be announced at a later date. For more information on the Creative Reading Series, contact Dr. Katherine Lane at 580-327-8470. Up next, we'll have Adriana give us an update on Ranger Sports. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Ranger Sports fans. I'm Adriana Becerra. Northwestern took on the Hillcats of Rogers State this past weekend and came away with a split. The first game went to RSU 4-3, while the second one went to the Rangers 11-3. The Rangers, starting in the circles, were two seniors, Laura Miller in Game 1 and Shelby Anderson in the second. Miller fanned seven batters and Anderson sat down one, but only gave up four hits in five innings. Five different Lady Rangers hit 400 or better on the day, headlined by Lindsay Thornton, who dominated at the plate, hitting 667. Up next, the Lady Rangers will take a break until March 6th when they will play at home for the first time this season. Southern Nazarene will come down for a four-game series. For more information about Lady Rangers softball, visit riderangersride.com. Ranger baseball headed to the University of Arkansas Monticello this past weekend. Rangers had a productive weekend with a 2-1 win on the series. Game 1 would go the Rangers with a 2-1 victory. Starting things off on the mound for the Rangers was freshman Matthew Bickford, who went six innings and only gave up three runs and struck out five batters to earn the win. Rangers gate took Game 2 with a 4-2 win. Offensively at the plate for the Rangers, they were led by Josh Caruso, who would go 2-3 for three with one RBI. Matt Ben would also go two for three, scoring two runs and stealing one base. <coughs> Jeff Martin, Logan Greenwell, and Trent Early would each knock in a run for the Rangers in the contest also. <coughs> Game three of the Rangers, the Rangers dropped to UAM. Pitching for the Rangers was Brody Asphalt, who would go three innings before Jason Bartlett, Jake Bershey, and Nick McKinney would all come in for relief appearances during the contest, giving up a collective three runs over three innings. Rangers, who are now 8-8 eight eight overall and 3-6 and six in the GAC, will host conference opponent Southern Arkansas this weekend in a three-game series beginning with a doubleheader Friday, March 6 at 1 p.m. The Northwestern Oklahoma State basketball team suffered an 82-73 loss to bitter rival Southwestern this past Thursday. The Lady Rangers struggled on offense, shooting 
37% from the field in their final game. Kamir Bozeman was the lone bright spot in the game, scoring 18 points and grabbing 7 rebounds. Southwestern came out hot and scored 47 points in the first half, shooting 51%. The Rangers gave good effort in the second half with 41 points, but it wasn't enough in the end. Our girls showed a lot of perseverance and kept fighting after being down in the first half, said Northwestern assistant coach Lewis Morales. Kimmy Swatsky of Southwestern was the leading scorer of the game with 24 points, including hitting three-pointers. Northwestern split their season series with Southwestern 1-1. -to -one. Andrew Brown has been released as the head men's basketball coach here at Northwestern. Brown compiled a 119 and 112 record with the Rangers in eight seasons. After winning the Great American Conference in 2013, the Rangers have gone 21 and 32, including 17 and 23 in conference mark. The Rangers finished 9 and 18 this season and finished 9th place in the GAC. Brown joined the program as a student assistant in 1995 before becoming a full-time assistant coach in 2004, then taking the head coaching job in 2007. Athletic director Andy Carter said the search for a new head coach will begin immediately. The Northwestern rodeo team not only comp competed at Manhattan, but also claimed a few titles while they were there. The women's team placed third overall, while the boys team came in fifth overall. Northwestern had 10 athletes make it back to the short round. The NWSU Cowboys took four events of steer wrestling. Four of the 10 Cowboys that made it back to the short rounds from there, from Northwestern. Lane Hurl took control of things when he claimed the title steer wrestling champion. Ty Beatty finished third overall, Stephen Culling finished sixth, and J.D. Struckis finished the weekend, splitting eighth and ninth. In team roping, Northwestern was represented by William Wayne and Dustin Searcy. Wayne ended up third for the weekend, and Searcy finished the weekend fifth overall. In barrel racing, Shea Ransom and Kelsey Driggers were the two Northwestern cowgirls that claimed a spot in the short round. Ransom ended up second overall, and the Driggers finished the weekend fifth overall. In breakaway roping, Ellie Pierce and Carly Kyle made it back to the short round. Price came in third for the weekend, while Kyle endured no time in the short round. Shayna Miller and Carly Kyle were the cowgirls that represent Northwestern in the short round of the goat tying. Kyle finished the weekend ninth overall, while Miller claimed a title and finished first overall. NWTV7 reporter Sarah Otto got a chance to talk to Shayna Miller about her mindset and preparation for the upcoming rodeos. I just got to take it one run at a time and not beat myself. Work hard during the week and show up ready to compete at each rodeo. The Rangers' next rodeo is at Garden City, Kansas, February 27th through March 1st. That's it for Ranger Sports Day. Thank you for joining us. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back. The Mass Communications OBEA SPJ meeting was canceled last week due to school closing for the weather. The meeting will now be held this Friday, March 6, at noon in the Radio Lounge. There are vacant officer positions, so if you are interested in running for an office, be sure to come. The Red and Black Scroll Honor Society applications officially closed on March 2nd. This society is an honors organization specifically for sophomores. Each application will be looked over, then the accepted students will be notified through email before spring break begins. There will be an initiation ceremony on March 31st at 6 p.m. This prestigious society has been on Northwestern's campus as early as the 1950s. The leaders of the organization are Dr. Sheila Brittenall, Professor, Pro professor of Mathematics, and Dr. Dina Walker, Assistant Professor of Mathematics. Dr. Walker says they want to emphasize a well-rounded individual that can be involved and be a leader in organizations, but also be a leader in the classroom. Applications for Outstanding Senior Awards are due no later than March 13th. These awards are given to December 2014 and May 2015 graduating seniors. The requirements to submit these applications are a minimum of 60 hours completed at Northwestern, at least a 3.5 grade point average, and have not been subject to academic or disciplinary actions. Also, when filling out these applications, they must include a resume, one to three letters of recommendation, current photo, and an official transcript. Submit your application to the Foundation Alumni Office. Awards will be presented at the annual Alumni Spring Reunion Ceremony, Saturday, April 25th. 
2015. If you have any questions, call 580-327-8593. Northwestern students Taylor Morris, Trenton Judd, and Nick Coffey were nominated for this year's Irene Ryan Award. They were recognized for the comedic acting in a recent play. By receiving the Irene Ryan nomination, they have the opportunity to compete for an acting award and scholarship. The Irene Ryan Acting Scholarship provides recognition, honor, and financial assistance to outstanding students, performers wishing to pursue further education. The Irene Ryan Foundation awards 16 regional and two national scholarships annually. One nominee and partner from every region will be invited to the national festival and the nominee will receive a $500 scholarship. The runner-up in each region will receive a $500 scholarship but will not attend the National Festival to audition for the National Scholarship. Students and coaches are encouraged to consult their regional chair or regional Irene Ryan Acting Scholarship Audition Coordinator for information on other regional awards. The Irene Ryan Acting Scholarship are indeed scholarships, so the foundation disperses the awards through a school de designated by the winner. To pay tuition and fees for further education, not necessarily limited to theater arts. The winners will be awarded next February. That's all. That's going to do it for us this week. If you have a story you would like to cover, contact, contact us at aazimmerman at nwosu.edu. Thanks for joining us and tune in next week for another edition of Ranger News.